Uh, let's talk about berberine containing plants. I get, always get excited talking about berberine because every culture of the world uses medicinal plants that have this yellow colored alkaloid in it, berberine. It, we can't synthesize it. That's an in, other interesting part. The molecule has a berberine bridge on it that is a very interesting bond that folds the molecule in a certain way that makes it very difficult to synthesize. So uh, you have to really extract it from, from plants. Fortunately, it's found in lots of different plants. It's used in all cultures, even Africa. I talked with an African herbalist at the International Herb Symposium a couple of times, and he said, yes, we have, he was also a chemist. He said, yes, we have two or three herbs that contain berberine in it that we use for treating parasitic infections and other types of infections. If you have heard that berberine and golden seal, for instance, is, da is, is dangerous or toxic, it's really not true. Berberine has very low toxicity. It's also, berberine is contraindicated in pregnancy, but not because it's an abortifacient, not because it stimulates the uterus. It actually relaxes the uterus in animal studies, but because it's associated with a higher incidence of neonatal jaundice. So that's why berberine-containing plants are typically contraindicated during pregnancy. But I can assure you that berberine is a very, very safe uh, compound, uh, especially found in the, the, the actual plants. There's also Huang Lian Su, which I'll sh I think I'll show you in a minute. I think I have a slide of it coming up. Uh, but it has very nice broad-spectrum antibiotic, antifungal, antiparasitic, and anti-inflammatory properties. It's especially good, I use it oftentimes and recommend it for sinus infections and sinusitis, uh, such as, well, sinusitis. Um, and basically you can use it in, uh, as a tea, you can make a tea of barberry or golden seal and then uh, make a saline solution by adding some salt and then use an ear syringe in order to get the, the saline up uh, on the golden seal or, or berberine up into the sinus cavities. And of course, there are a lot of sinusoids up there, so you have to force that solution up in there to really flush everything out. I always think it's, it's interesting when people talk about using neti pots for flushing the sinuses, because really, if you look at neti pots, you're pouring the water in there and it just runs down the throat. How can you get it up in the sinuses where, you really, where it's really needed? So uh, neti pots really, in my opinion, are not, uh, might burst some bubbles or something, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, neti pots are pretty worthless as far as treating sinus infections. The way to go is an ear syringe, and then you just get the saline up there and force it up, and you can just see the mucus and debris coming out of your sinuses. But putting a little berberine in there really is effective for treating sinus infections. Uh, <coughs> some families produce a lot of berberine, the berberidaceae, the barberry family, Ranunculaceae, the crowfoot family, Rutaceae, citrus family, Menospermaceae is the much more of a tropical family, uh, and, and then the poppy family also contains, uh, produces a lot of uh, berberine type alkaloids. The, the plants that are, are most widely used, I use Coptis chinensis more than uh, any others, Wang Lian, Wang Lian is the um, pinyin, <coughs> simply because it's cultivated. And uh, golden seal, um, taking golden seal from the wild is, is not so good. Um, I don't know whether you saw the news, it was actually in the headlines a couple of days ago that uh, ch middle class Chinese that are now have a lot of money are basically taking up the last of the wild American ginseng in this country. It was just in the headlines of the news a couple of days ago uh, that wild American ginseng, uh, a lot of uh, man people uh, think that, that it may be basically gone completely within another 10 or 15 years uh, because it's, there's so much pressure on it. So golden seal too has a lot of pressure on it as a medicinal plant. That's why I like using Coptis chinensis, which is really uh, one of the main cultivated sources of berberine. Plus it has a higher percentage of berberine uh, than, than other plants. So. I typically use that as a Chinese herb. Uh, spring wind is a good source of Chinese herbs if you want one that uh, they really pay attention to non-sulfided herbs and non-fumigated herbs. 
probably the best source is Spring Wind, and they're in, in uh, Oakland or Berkeley, uh, California. But uh, Andy Ellis is the proprietor. He, he's very picky about uh, the quality. Uh, Mahonia's barberry, there's a picture of Mahonia right uh, on the slide. Berberus, <coughs> sorry, Mahonia's or grape root, uh, Ber um, the Berberus is um, barberry. Uh, Philodendron is a, from the citrus family, so the bark is, is taken off. You don't see that too much uh, utilized. Uh, golden seal, Tinospora, uh, that's a tropical plant, but which is used to treat infections. Uh, and uh, Argemone is, prick, is a prickly poppy, and uh, Ascholtia. They actually have some berberine uh, in them, but small amounts. 